In a recent interview at Loma Linda University Children's Hospital, we spoke with cardiologist Dr. Leonard Bailey, who in 1984 performed the first pediatric heart transplant on baby Faye at Loma Linda Hospital. Here now is Dr. Bailey with this remarkable story. We had uh, this protocol that the review board had approved that would allow us to put uh, a selected baboon, infant baboon heart into the first recipient, baby Faye. That heart performed without a glitch uh, in the uh, first few days after uh, transplantation. And then at about day nine or 10, there was a glitch in the care at the bedside. Uh, we, were giving, we were giving a drug called cyclosporin A in those days. Unfortunately, the full syringe of this concoction managed to get in the baby in just a matter of a few moments uh, on that particular day. It was discovered right away, and uh, the baby's immunologist and I decided that the first thing we should do is an exchange transfusion. We reported all this in the JAMA article on the baby. And things went along reasonably well, probably because we did an exchange transfusion for another eight or nine days. And then, then the baby began to have some changes that we couldn't understand. It was like nothing we'd encountered in the laboratory. It certainly didn't represent a rejection of the heart graft. Uh, it was something entirely new and different. And then she began to be a little blue and had to be put back on a ventilator. And she had this uh, cyanosis that was inexplicable as well. And finally, the last thing that, uh, that sort of phased out was her little heart. Um, on about the 20th or 21st day or so, after surgery, uh, we started some medicine to sort of cheer the heart up if we could, but uh, uh, it was clear that the heart was going the same way as these other organs. And um, it was such a mystery. And we, and we knew then that we were in trouble here and we were probably going to lose the baby. And that, that happened. And we spent... Uh, months after that with autopsy specimens trying to sort out what really happened to baby Faye. The evidence suggests that there was not rejection. She didn't have immunoglobulin in this heart. Uh, she didn't have any cells invading the heart. But she did have little infarcts in the heart. Infarcts meaning that uh, the blood supply to the, some areas of the lungs, brain, kidneys, heart, the blood supply was jammed up somehow uh, so that the muscle beyond or the lung beyond uh, simply died. The major lesson from baby Faye is that uh, that, that combination of donor and recipient is feasible. And about a year later, we had a phone call from Northern California that there was a baby who was brain dead. The parents desperately wanted to donate organs. Nobody was interested. Are you in the transplant business at Loma Linda? And I said, I thought we were. Let me go see if, we, if there's a baby here that may be dying of the same heart disease the baby they had. And sure enough, there was. And so baby Faye's experience really led straight to the first successful newborn heart transplant. That sort of started the infant uh, uh, transplant industry. And it was the major growth area in all of heart transplantation for a number of years. It escalated the total numbers right on up to about 500, 550 worldwide annually. There have now been something in the order of 11 to 12,000 uh, infants and youngsters transplanted, largely as a result of the impetus from baby Faye. So I think her legacy has been phenomenal.